Who else liked the dramatic start of the WWDC 24 keynote? Or am I just not watching enough movies? Fantastic human. Hello. It's Ropsy with Paperless X. In today's video, we'll be discussing all the exciting announcements from the WWDC 24 keynote. Apple Intelligence was the biggest announcement which felt mostly like repetition with few additions to what Apple had already presented prior to announcing it. The tech industry should create rules or a code of conduct that governs how they name their products. Tech is confusing enough. We don't need product names to make it worse. Does AI now mean artificial intelligence and Apple intelligence? We really don't need all that drama. AI image generation has been hyped up over the last couple of months with a lot of apps mushrooming with the technology and Apple just jumped onto that wagon. Judging by the images they presented during the keynote, it's not as complicated as other image generation AI tools. But we'll know for sure once we try them ourselves. We can create animations, illustrations and sketches whose details are really only limited by your imagination. We'd like to try that one and see if we can save time that would waste drawing diagrams or explaining something with a terrible sketch. The proofreading and rewriting features are quite useful. We're curious to know if they're as good as the ones that are currently on the market. But from the keynote, they seem to have most of the core features covered. They work across different apps with options to choose tones. And go through the suggested grammar corrections for your writing. The way Justin was excited about these. Has he never heard of Grammarly or Quillbot? Or is he just excited to have figured out how they work? Apple is introducing intelligence that understands you. It's sellable. After what feels like decades of language and image generation with AI, it's refreshing to see some action features that can simplify how we use our devices. The problem is that I've had Siri turned off on all my devices since it was first launched. So everything they presented in the keynote, I thought Siri already did that check the weather, open specific images. Adding the image to Apple Notes was cool though. We're curious if you are part of the 1.5 billion Siri requests. With the privacy architecture for the AI features that Apple presented, we're a little optimistic about using AI especially considering how useful it is becoming. We love that Apple addressed the biggest issue which most tech companies have refused to talk about or are openly just abusing. That is probably why most of us love and trust Apple in the first place, control over our data. The only problem we have at the moment is that some independent experts verify Apple's privacy promise surrounding its AI features. We can't help but wonder who those experts are and why we can't just verify it ourselves. It's our data, right? Another issue we have is how Siri doesn't ask permission when interacting with private cloud compute. Let's face it, we've come this far without AI and while it is helpful, it might not be worth giving up our data for something that we can already do ourselves. So it would be nice if we had the option to not allow Siri to go into the cloud with our information. But all things considered, we love that most of the AI features happen on the device without sending your data to any developer server. So we are turning on Siri to discover what's been happening in that space. We can finally access ChatGPT without having to create accounts or without having to log into accounts. 
You will be asked each time to allow your data to be sent to ChatGPT if Siri can't find the answer for you. And without an account, does OpenAI still store your data? That remains unclear. But if you have an account and you have the paid version of ChatGPT, you'll still be able to use it. We love the flexibility. All these AI features will be available on all the M series iPad Pros, iPad Airs, MacBooks, and iMacs. But only the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max will have them. Normally, we'd be upset about excluding so many devices, but since we're not 100% on board with the idea, we're not upset with that at all. Especially because these features seem to be integrated into the operating system with no switch to turn them on and off. The Siri we've always been able to deactivate, but that doesn't seem to be the case with Apple Intelligence. Am I the only one who thinks that this name is absolutely ridiculous? Now we know where developers are getting the annoying floating toolbar. It seems though that I'm the only one bothered by the floating toolbars covering part of my notes. Everyone else on the team doesn't see anything wrong with that. Surely. One of you fantastic humans can understand where I'm coming from. No? At least we can move it to the sidebar, which will show more options, which makes sense because toolbars should remain anchored at the top or on the side. Who's with me? We definitely did not share the initial excitement with Craig when he first mentioned the calculator app. It's probably coming from years of bitterness of having to look for your phone each time you want to do a simple calculation because your iPad doesn't have a calculator. But we quickly caught on when he mentioned math notes. That was exciting. Um, that was quickly watered down with the simple calculations. The MyScript calculator does that already. But the more features they unveiled, the more impressive the app got. We can combine our calculations with notes and use natural actions to get answers. The app even supports complex math information. Do we still need to teach maths in school? Well, we can save our children the hustle and stop wasting their time and teach them other skills instead. And can even draw graphs. What? Our team is split on the smart script technology. I find the handwriting improvement a bit unpleasant and I imagine distracting when taking notes. But others are embracing it. So let us know, how do you feel about it? We also have text to handwriting conversion in iPadOS 18. We'll be even more excited when we actually finally try this and see how accurate it actually replicates our handwriting. The spell check in Apple Notes looks a lot like the one in GoodNote 6. Whose idea was this? GoodNotes or Apple? We've loved creating space between sections of our notes in Apple Notes. A lot of note takers love this feature. In iPadOS 18, we'll be able to create space between words and letters in our notes. These are by far the most exciting updates we've seen in Apple Notes for quite some time now. Does it work with handwriting or only with the one that you convert from text? This is actually brilliant. Love it. Scribble to Erase has a history of hit and miss, so we'll jump for joy after testing it a couple of times. From the demo though, it looks like the smartest version of this feature we have ever seen, because it managed to erase exactly what was scribbled over. Maybe it's time to consider switching from our current note-taking apps. AI image generation is also coming to Apple Notes. We can now use it to improve our ugly drawings, and even create some from scratch. Then Craig casually mentions that we can audio record and transcribe the recordings in Apple Notes. Doesn't that require a whole 10 minute presentation? 
digital note taking just got better in iPadOS 18 and we can't wait to get our hands on the features. We've spent hours trying to explain how to do things to people. The drawing feature is a welcome update which will save us quite a lot of time. But even better is the ability to control their device. Um, just set up things for them. Unless, of course, if they want to learn how to do things, then in that case, we'll just stick to drawing. We really got one sentence about scenes in freeform. That is like a big deal. To simmer down a bit, I reminded myself that we're still using iPad OS on iPad Pro. That always just ruins my day. But um, these updates are actually quite exciting. We like the idea of moving icons to the bottom or to the side of the screen, but it would be better if we could move each app to an exact location we want on the screen. Android has been doing this for years now, so Apple, be serious. Custom colors for icons seem like a good idea because they look cooler until you want to find an app. We go through tons of apps every day and apps are easier to find when they have different and unique icons. But now if they're all red, you then have to read the names of the apps with small tiny prints, and that will only slow you down. This is definitely a very useless feature in our opinion, but maybe that just only applies to us because of the nature of our work. There are a number of features that we're not big enough to get super excited about, but they're worth mentioning. The new control gallery makes features for the control center easily accessible. We're happy that we don't have to go to our device settings anymore. And it's great that we can resize the controls. App lock is cool. And hiding your apps from others is also cool. However, from the keynote, they don't look very hidden. We were expecting hidden apps to completely disappear from your home screen. Maybe there's something we're missing. Contact access is also great. It will definitely help us with recording videos for you guys. We have needed tab back improvements for what feels like forever. After all these years of waiting, we can't even be excited about it because we're simply tired. We appreciate the ability to schedule messages and format them. We never thought these features would be useful by seeing them just open a whole lot of possibilities for us. And the text effects are also quite cool. They look quite fun. The mail features in iOS 18 have been in Gmail for years. Not very exciting, it's not even worth mentioning in a presentation to be honest. So the paperless X team feels the new organization in photos makes more sense and is more intuitive. I wouldn't know because my relationship with the photos app is quite strange. I don't take photos of myself or family because I tend to like being in the moment. So there's not really any time to be taking photos. Even the idea of going through photos and videos and wanting to organize them sounds quite strange from my perspective. So I can't really appreciate what photos is offering. I'm curious to know what features excited you most from all the changes that are coming to the Photos app in iOS 18. All the energy Craig put into presenting macOS, I feel should have just gone to presenting iPadOS because macOS Sequoia, not very exciting. So all that energy for this. Continuity would have been fun if two people could use the iPhone at the same time. But we we'll get why Apple set it up the way they did. It's the only way that makes sense, to be honest. It will be helpful for those of us that are always misplacing our phones. At least you won't waste time looking for the phone to do simple tasks. Overall, there weren't a lot of exciting features specific to Mac OS. We are excited about all the updates that are coming to iPadOS 18, some in iOS 18, and we are a bit indifferent about macOS Sequoia, probably missing something. 
which of these updates excited you the most and which features are you looking forward to trying out and using for your digital workflow we hope you guys like this video give it a thumbs up if you did thank you fantastic human for watching see you in the next video